Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening. Tasmania's political rumour mill is in overdrive ahead of a cabinet reshuffle with the health portfolio and potentially more up for grabs. Making feelings on their current minister clear, firefighters and emergency services have rallied ahead of proposed reforms. Used to stepping up in times of need, emergency workers say it's the TFS that's now in crisis. All I ask from the government is to support me to do this. While Minister Felix Ellis says the Fire Service Act reforms will empower the new agency, they're arguing it will lessen community safety. This minister has to stop doing his prepared speeches. He needs to sit down, listen to the people who do the work. The government is listening to them, the government is engaging with them. Fury amongst fireys is one of the spot fires the Premier has a chance to douse with his upcoming reshuffle. Rumours are rife over what portfolios are on the move and how many. I mean, I've never seen this before where a Premier of a state announces a reshuffle but can't say who he's going to put into each role. Madeleine Ogilvie's racing industry review has created challenges, while 11 and 9% power price rises have put a target on Guy Barnett's back. The state's also facing economic headwinds, with a new Deloitte Access report predicting a small recession by year's end. Now what's frustrating is that we have so much opportunity right now in our state. Uh, you know, we know of at least $8 billion worth of development that's just waiting to go. What Deloitte are talking about are projections. What we saw yesterday are actual figures that say that we've got record employment. But the big question is who gets health? There's speculation Guy Barnett could be in line. So too Nick Street and Roger Yench. But whoever it is, they'll have an enormous workload ahead of them and some impatient stakeholders. What we're very concerned about is the fact that there is nobody else uh, that seems up to the job of b being Health Minister. If the Premier asks me to take the health portfolio or any other portfolio, I'm ready to serve in his Cabinet at his pleasure. More convincing than the last man asked if he wanted to be Health Minister. <laughs> Or, or something else? <laughs> no. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. Save UTAS has slammed the university for continuing with works on Melville Street's forestry building. The university halted plans for sites it hadn't yet begun work on last year after the results of an elector poll on the city move. Only 26% of Hobart voters supported the university's plans to relocate to the city. The spirit of the university's commitment that it would stop work was that it would stop all work. Not that it would, by stealth, somehow try and inch forward to get to the stage where the whole thing's a fait accompli. Earlier this week, TASCAT rejected an appeal against the project by Save UTAS. UTAS says the redevelopment will provide state-of-the-art and highly accessible facilities. Tasmania police are renewing calls for information to help locate a young mother who vanished in Burnie 15 years ago. The case of Helen Munnings attracted national attention, with a substantial reward for information still on offer. It was the disappearance that rocked the northwest. 20-year-old Helen Munnings was last seen on Marine Terrace in Burnie on July 23, 2008. The cold case still open to this day. It's the 15 year anniversary of the disappearance of Helen this weekend and uh, we're renewing the call for public information to determine what happened to her. Following an extensive land, sea and aerial search, her whereabouts are still unknown. In 2012, a coronial investigation determined Helen died in or near Burnie but wasn't able to rule on a cause or motive. It was also revealed she was pregnant at the time. Police still strongly suspect Helen was murdered. There's certainly um, a number of people who we've spoken to throughout the investigation and obviously without the information that we require to charge a person, nothing remains off the table. Officers hope the passage of time will encourage community members in Burnie who may know what happened to Helen to come forward and bring closure to Helen's family. Combined with the change of allegiances, changes in circumstances and relationships we're hoping might be just uh, the incentive and the catalyst to bring someone forward. A half a million dollar reward remains on offer for information that leads to a conviction. Mark Zeta, 7 Tasmania News. 
A 27-year-old Hewenville man has been charged with multiple counts of theft across southern Tasmania. Police allege close to $40,000 worth of property has been stolen from tradies over the past two weeks in Hobart and Kingston. Only $15,000 of the items have been recovered so far. Officers are reminding tradies to secure their gear and to not leave valuables inside their vehicles overnight. The man will face court next month. A night of nostalgia awaits the state's football world with clubs, players and memorable moments set to be recognised in Tasmanian Football's Hall of Fame. We cross live now to Tom Johnson at Rest Point and Tom, tonight's Hall of Fame will be jam-packed with inductees. Yes, it will be, Kim, because it's been five years since the last Hall of Fame night, so there'll be plenty to get through tonight. Among them is Mitch Robinson, former Carlton and Brisbane player, plus Max Hardacre, who played hundreds of games across the North and the North West as well. Also, Simon Wiggins, the Carlton star, the Penguin Football Club being inducted as a great club, and the North Launceston Scott Star rivalry in its heyday, which we revealed last night. That's getting recognition as well. And there's one more to come, the legendary team. Kim, I'll have those details a little later on in sports, so speak to you then. Tasmanians are being warned to protect themselves this winter with flu rates higher than previous years. Experts claim one in 50 people are reporting respiratory symptoms each week with COVID and RSV also making their way around the state. Members of the public are encouraged to stay up to date with their vaccines and take advantage of the COVID at Home Plus program. COVID numbers have declined quite a lot in the last uh, six weeks. Uh, we're now seeing um, about 40 or 50 COVID notifications a day. Those who enrol in COVID at home are given a monitoring kit uh, which they can use remotely and it enables us to record their observations and provide tailored health advice. Nearly 40,000 people have accessed the service since December 2021. All hands are on deck in Hobart as maintenance work continues on one of the Spirit of Tasmania's vessels. The three-week project helping with safety requirements and also getting the ship ready for sail. Deep in the bowels of the Spirit of Tasmania too, there's stonework at play. The 25-year-old vessel, which has carried hundreds of thousands of passengers, is in the midst of a deep clean. Regular maintenance, standard maintenance that all ships are required to have. 80 staff and contractors going over the vessel from top to bottom. There's engine maintenance, there's tank maintenance, um, really anything that, that can be done above the water is being done. So it's, it's a significant, significant contract. All work's happening under the watchful eye of the captain. In command, in respect to maintaining the vessel operation, basically management system we have on the ship, respect to the safety. Usually done in Sydney, a conflicting booking forced him to set a course for Hobart. Labor says the capital should be the port of choice. If it can be done today, if it can be done at the moment, why isn't this work always done in Hobart? But TT Lane says Garden Island is the only dry dock large enough to do crucial works. Any opportunity to keep jobs in Tasmania is a great opportunity. The work also serving a greater purpose. With new vessels arriving next year, the two current ones will be sold. An upcoming shipping conference in Hobart, shaping as the first chance to test the waters. There will be a number of prospective uh, buyers of these types of ships so we want to make sure that the ships are in tip-top condition. Locals encouraged to get one last look before it sets sail for a new home. These vessels are iconic for Tasmania. You know, every Tasmanian knows them very very well. You guys are blessed. Hobart is amazing. It's beautiful. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. For the second year in a row, a South Australian artist is $100,000 richer after winning this year's Hadley's Art Prize. More than 570 creators entered the landscape painting competition with more female Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander applicants than ever before. Bursting with colour and meaning. It's my, uh, my country, my place, where my uh, family's grandparents and uncles and grandmothers lived before us. Vicky Cullinan's portrayal of Australian landscape winning the hearts of three judges and so too the prestigious 2023 Hadley's Art Prize. I was really surprised and I got really shocked uh, that um, I won this prize. 
You see it first of all, you get the flash of red and all the marks and you, f and you can feel all this movement, but every time you return to it, it gives you more. It's almost vibrating, it's, it's like it's pulsating and alive. Despite the hefty $100,000 award, the Tasmanian competition is no longer ranked Australia's richest. Recently, the Natsia Art Awards in Darwin had doubled their prize money. Meantime, Victorian artist Melissa Kennahan has also gone home a winner, receiving the $10,000 residency prize. They get to come back here and stay for a month in Hobart. They get an art studio for a month as well and $500 towards art supplies. The finalists' exhibition will run for a month with all pieces on sale, except for Vicky's masterpiece, which will hang permanently in Hadley's Orient Hotel. Brianna Boylan, 7 Tasmania News. Neighbourly love will be felt throughout Hobart when street parties pop up in the suburbs later this year. Locals can sign up for the My Street program, which sees performers and food vans come to their area provided by the Hobart City Council. Lena Valley hosted a street party last year and had more than 200 people show up. It was the highlight of the community calendar from all accounts. The park was full, the people were here, people met people they hadn't seen for years. It's a special party for your special part of the world. Those interested need to apply through Council's website. It's not the kind of partnership you see every day, but a Tasmanian exercise studio is hoping to do its bit for crucial mental health support. KX Pilates has teamed up with Lifeline for a national 24-hour mental health relay with 50-minute classes running every hour. Organisers still have 100 spots open for participants, raising much-needed funds for the service. Our goal that we set was $150,000. The reason for this is because that's the average cost of running all 41 national Lifeline centres around Australia for one day. Tasmanians can secure their spot in the challenge by contacting the company. Ageing positively has been at the forefront of the agenda at a health expo. Hundreds crowded into Beaconsfield's community hall to find out more about services to enable them to stay fit and active for longer. Ageing together in comfort and in style. People just like to get together and have a chat. It's something different and it's, it's giving back to the community. A packed out Beaconsfield community hall turning into a one-stop shop for West Hamers over 50s. We wanted the community to know what's available for them so I just had the idea of bringing everybody together and it's winter time so it'll give people something to do. A think tank of minds putting their services on display, each stall offering something unique for everyone. We've got a lot of local community groups and service providers and there's about 42 or 43 stall holders so it's fantastic. From taking time to have a chat to laughing the day away, everyone blown away by the turnout and response. Exceeded all expectations. So many locals supporting it. I never expected it this big. Amazing how many people are here and nice people, they're all happy. Organisers spruiking the benefits of living an active and involved lifestyle. To do things uh, out of your comfort zone. You volunteer, uh, take up a sport. The community coming together, celebrating their love for the West Hamer and one another. Oh, it's the best sport ever. The weather is the best ever. The wild horses wouldn't take me away. It is just the most wonderful community. Victoria East 07, Tasmania News. Tasmania's Riley Sanders can add all Australian captain to his list of accolades. He was named skipper of the side selected from the best players at the under-18 national championships, which the Allies won. Colby McKercher and James Leake were the other Tasmanians given all Australian honours. And we can reveal Cooey's 1978 state premiership winning team will be inducted into the Tasmanian Football Hall of Fame. TNT9 cameras were there that day and for a special Friday flashback we dusted off the tape and showed it to those who played. Rymouth gives it across to Beaumont. Beaumont puts it right through the middle and it's another goal for Cooey. With their unmistakable green and gold Guernseys, the Cooey Bulldogs were nearly untouchable in their 70s and 80s golden era. Day's former players remember well. It was the Daryl Shevard show. <laughs>
To brothers Daryl and Graham Shepherd, plus Kerry Beswick, the high watermark of the club came in 1978. Victory in the very last of the old state premierships. That's a good kick, the umpire doesn't move and beards put it right through the middle. As soon as the game started it was on. You could, feel, you could feel that we were, we were going to be right. In a sign of the rich history loss, Cooey beat another now defunct club, Sandy Bay, both deft in the art of the tour. Greenhill's torpedo punt's gone almost to the centre of the ground. There wasn't a lot of tactics. It was just get it, kick it yeah. down there. Whatever the mentality, it worked. Cooey victors by 26 points, setting the northwest alight. Picture of them uh, hanging out the region hotel off the balcony. I don't know where you can see that. Oh, it's upside down. Just eight years later, the club shed its colours to become the Bernie Hawks, so it could join the statewide league. But 1978 side will be immortalised in Tasmanian football's Hall of Fame. Back and he pulls down a magnificent mark. Forever linking the club to greatness. I just love that upside down photo, Kim. And gee, what a fantastic night for Cooey and Penguin, Scott Stale, North Launceston as well, and many individuals who are going to be recognised here tonight. So a fabulous night ahead, the Tasmanian Football Hall of Fame. Should be a ripper. Well, it was lovely to see some sunshine in parts of the state today after a foggy start in the north. Hobart, Devonport and Burnie all 13. Launceston slightly cooler with 12 degrees. Bushy Park and St Helens, the state's top today with 14. 13 for King Island, Smithton, Friendly Beaches, Grove and Strawn all 13. Flinders Island, Low Head and Mariah Island 12, 5 for Lyweenie. Mostly cloudy conditions about western Tasmania and mostly clear conditions about eastern parts of the state today. The satellite image shows low level cloud about coastal parts of western and southern Tasmania as well as southern Victoria and southern SA, parts of coastal New South Wales and much of eastern Queensland. A frontal band can be seen passing the south of WA. Tomorrow, a high pressure system centred over WA extends a ridge over central Australia and into New South Wales and eastern Victoria, while a cold front extends to the west of the state. West to northwesterly winds 15 to 20 knots, reaching up to 25 knots about the west and southwest, increasing up to 30 knots ahead of west to southwesterly change at 10 to 20 knots, crossing western and southern waters in the evening. West to southwesterly swells in the west and south, building to four metres. A strong wind warning has been issued for the southwest coast tomorrow. Possible showers in the south tomorrow, 15 for Hobart, 12 in Maydina and 13 for Oatlands. 14 in Launceston and Devonport and early frost for Lyawini. Burnie, Strawn and Marawar showers and 13. St Helens and Orford both 15, partly cloudy conditions and 16 for Swansea. Looking now to the three day forecast, Sunday showers about the west and far south, easing in the afternoon and evening. Fine elsewhere apart from afternoon showers in the northeast. Monday fine apart from light showers about the west, extending to the far south in the afternoon and evening. Tuesday fine apart from light showers about the west. Cloud clearing in Perth tomorrow, sunny in Darwin and Sydney, becoming cloudy in Melbourne. And currently in Hobart, it's eight, partly cloudy, mostly clear in Launceston and clear in Devonport. Another working week done and dusted. Kim, have a lovely weekend. And you too. Thank you, Kaya. And that is all your news for this Friday night. Thanks for joining us. Enjoy your weekend, everyone. Good night.